Um, now, nah, if you, you can introduce the first, you're, yeah, you're the student. Okay. <laughs> um, so I'm Chloe um, and I recently graduated from interior and spatial design. Um, I'm excited to have a conversation with you today. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think it'd be, it'd be really nice actually talking about the course. Uh, so I'm Richards and I graduate. So I don't actually know when I graduated because it was quite a long time ago. Um, <laughs> uh, what year was it? So you graduated in 20... It's close, it's close about sort of six, seven years ago now. Oh, wow. Yeah, so yeah, it's, it's, it's been a while. So, I mean, trying to, like, trying to look through the work that I had on my final year, I was actually like, oh, well, I had to go through some hard drives to find it. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's been really nice to hear like, hearing about your work and um, how the course is, yeah, how the course has been. But, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so what have you been up to since graduation? So, since, since graduating, uh, which obviously was a while ago, I went, uh, so when I finished... When I finished the course, because the course was at uh, Chelsea at the time, and I decided that I wanted to do graphic design just before I started my last year at, uh, on the course. Um, and then the tutor I was with at the moment to like, help, help me kind of merge the two together, because I think like, that's what's good about the course, you can like, really blend different things. So yeah. I went on to do a master's, master's in um, graphic media design at LCC. Um, which is part time, so over like two and a half years, and and then yeah, uh, since then I guess yeah, that was good. And then since then I stopped with I work with my partner now, Josie, who we run a, a climate communications agency called Adapt. Um, yeah, yeah. I saw some I saw some of that. I saw the website. It looks really interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. It's, it's it's fun. I mean, it's the only way to kind of deal with the current like climate crisis is just we try and make it as fun as possible we like we do, do loads of different stuff kind of like we're still at uni because we never really we she was doing a master's class we never really graduate got out of the mindset of like always doing different things so we try and like just do loads of different things and I kind of start to talk through some of that work um in a in a second but um obviously I was there and I was looking through your your like your work that you sent over which is like really exciting like the idea of play is really cool so just to ask what your final year project was about yeah of course um i'll just share my screen um, can you see that um yeah that's good yeah. okay um so i actually did two projects um for my final year uh, project um, so I had the first one I did was play pipes so that was um that was a that was um a commission that I won along with one of my peers for the South London Gallery um so initially I started the project um by playing and going on a playful walk nearby um so I played a series of games to get my ideas flowing and themes that kind of arose from that um was um, the idea of hand-eye coordination and connection. So the idea of like bringing people together um, and to form connections with one another. Um, so I decided to take these ideas forward within my initial, um, within my project. Um, so I wanted to bring the children together to work alongside each other and learn by creating their own games. Um, so here was here was some visualizations of kind of like the concept I ha had like so each month something new would be introduced into the project and then they would kind of learn from the different materiality. Um, and then um, further along in my design, I realized that maybe things weren't working um, as well as I expected them to, or I was being too, um, I was being too forward for the age group that I was working with. So I, um, I introduced like certain design elements like the wooden boxes over on the side that you can see. Um, I introduced them to allow the children to kind of play and build with with the boxes um, and this is just some of and then I event we eventually connected the project with one of my peers Anna so we won the co collaboration together um, and then we started to introduce the different the different um, layouts and all of her elements as well so like the pink elements um, into the playscape um, so yeah, that was that one. And then kind of like following on from that. Um, so I wanted to carry on. So I, the next project I did was called Rehub. So this is kind of like a community center workshop and it was around the ideas of like upcycling. And um, So I wanted to carry on the themes from the first project. Um, so the ideas of like connection. So bringing the community together. So this 
this space, like the site that it sits on is actually behind the South London Gallery. So it was about bringing the South London Gallery, the estate behind it and the Campbell College of Arts like together and like getting them to connect and using upcycling as a way for them to make things for the community and like um, have money um, put back into the community. Um, so it would, so uh in terms so in terms of design it was it was like scaffolding i was using as my material so the scaffolding would create like extensions coming away from the buildings um and as this was as this was something um on a construction site next to my site and i wanted to kind of put that into the upcycling cycle um so the project was going to be a temporary project um and it would run over six months and the workshops would run over the weekend covering certain topics that the residents could learn and then take those skills and put them skills into their own home. Um, and then on the weekdays, the space would just kind of be like a play space and just be interpreted for uh, the community to use as they wished. Yeah. Um, so like, obviously you, you definitely got, um, in the, especially in the second theme, like obviously the upcycling is really great. And I think that like, you can find so much, I mean, there's so much, so much material you can always like pick up and use in different ways, but why, why did you have the focus on bringing sort of like different communities together? Like, is that something that's quite important to uh, your, your work? Or? Yeah, I feel like as a designer, I kind of do focus on play and community and just making, making like disused spaces more um, accessible for those surrounding it. So like, this is obviously a disused, like, um, green space so I kind of wanted everyone to use this as a destination rather than something that they don't really go to but yeah bringing communities together is definitely something that I do in a lot of my projects. And then oh, so when I was looking through earlier like, what was really nice is if you go back to the first uh, the first projects yeah um, did like first like the, the hand-eye coordination was something that was really nice it was like a different way I guess for people to play like to start I guess like feeding things and I guess that's why you brought in all the imagine that's why you brought in all the different materials into the space yeah so I wanted them to like use the materials and kind of understand um the materials and use them in a different way and it's really interesting with children they can just kind of di dictate completely what they want and you wouldn't have ever expected that to happen you know so do you think that's something we've lost as we've got older like there's a bit do you think there's like because I the understand like I guess it like, goes to with links with your the idea of upcycling and the idea of like playing with different materials is not something as adults we do we do enough and I think that that's so important to so kind of like building a circular economy and things like that it's like yeah like the idea of like it's really nice that you kind of had a space where you even whether it's, if it's designed for children but if you, do you think there's like an importance of bringing adults into a space like that yeah definitely um I feel like we definitely do lose our playfulness as we grow older so it's kind of good to have somewhere that people can go to um kind of go back to their childhood and kind of appreciate the fact that um things don't always have to go the way that you want them to go so yeah it was really interesting to see um the kids just do what they want with it and then yeah bringing adults into that is is definitely good so that they can get more of an understanding of just playfulness in general yeah and it's like just understanding just like, yeah I think as we get in older it's like you're understanding just like the importance of using using what you have and I think that's actually almost like what what's been quite good about obviously the current situation everyone's in with lockdowns everyone's kind of found their hobbies and what they like doing again yeah exactly and it's like you know we, we had this whole thing in our house that we built we wanted to like sort out our garden so we were like building a lot of garden furniture but obviously we just did it out of everything we could find on the streets from becoming like scavengers in a way which is quite mm -hmm. normal but you just yeah and then you start to understand I guess it's nice you start to understand more about materiality and stuff which is good yeah it's really good yeah I feel like the lockdown has definitely helped to uh, a lot of people kind of understand what's what's important so yeah cool um so I'll stop sharing. Um, so what was your final year project about? Okay, so uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll share my screen. Like, so actually finding work of it was quite hard and I didn't want to, it was like I used to like, I used to look at that project a lot, but then I guess even the way I work is like completely, um, it's completely changed uh, since, since my BA and my masters. 
Um, is, that, is, that, is that sharing? Yeah, that is sharing, yeah. Cool. So that you can see that, that's fine. Yeah. So I guess like, so my final year project was, it was very theory based. So I had my tutor, um, who was Robin, I don't know if he's actually on your course anymore, but he, um, he was like, when I said to him, obviously, I'm not sure about how you know, to do with the architect. Like, if I want to ask, if I want to go into sort of space design architecture, but I kind of really like the graphic style of things. He started like, he got us really looking into social theories and understanding like the world in different ways. So I got quite interested in the idea of starting to like understand more about capitalism, how that is a system, how it's set up, and then looking at socialism, how that works, and kind of looking at the architecture around that. And um, I think so. What I did because I wasn't actually I kind of just wanted to draw and uh, I make a book and write a lot and stuff. So I created a book that was called The Revolution of Self, which obviously looking back on it now, like when I was writing, uh, like some of the stuff I said was you know it's still, I was still quite naive and like understanding the world and things. I thought I think I hope like that I've learned a lot more since. But um, the idea was like it was this book that. Um, was basically looking at a world where they okay so a group of humans have moved to a new uh to a new planet to try and set up a new way of living and they had like really i guess like socialist ideals at the beginning and they sort of wrote a manifesto and because i was doing a lot of uh, research into the history of the soviet union how that formed and how that sort of uh, again, just, just sort of disintegrated and how it's kind of been built back up in certain ways. Um, now, I was sort of writing a manifesto about how these people should live and sort of created drawings, which were then kind of like a graphic novel, but then also they got animated into a film after. Not very well, but they got animated after. Mm-hmm. And um, it was looking at how the architecture represented people's views. And then there was a second edition of the manifesto when they decided to change bits and it was looking at all ideas of power and how uh, people start to exploit a system. And then the third manifesto again had been changed and edited again. So it was, um, I guess, yeah, there was like then clear elements of power and control within the system, which started off with like socialist ideals. Um, so it was, it was very conceptual and I was just playing around with lots of different uh lots of different ways of drawing and how to communicate, I guess, like communicate these ideals and, but through architecture and, and graphic design in a way. So I, I would actually like to talk a lot more about it, but it was such a, it was such a long time ago, but it was, um, yeah, it was kind of just like a real mix, but I, because it was very graphic, I like wasn't, I didn't like pay a huge attention to materiality in the way you do yeah and I was kind of it was more about the graphic style but which is obviously that changes I've got older in certain projects I've done I've kind of gone back to the stuff I learned more in first and second year but um, yeah it's, it's super super interesting how it's very conceptual though like I enjoy that you haven't really thought about the materiality because it means that it's like it's not limited like you could have just gone anywhere you wanted to go you know yeah which is which is really nice I think like I mean I remember just it was almost you could just draw when I was drawing a lot before um while I was putting it together is I was able just to draw whatever I kind of felt was in my head or kind of felt matched um the writing that I was doing yeah which was really nice yeah you were you were, you were almost it was almost like sort of yeah it was quite freeing in that way and I guess maybe that, that I wonder how that certain architects um obviously do that a lot and then they kind of then work out the materiality after but it, it was definitely nice to kind of not have to think about that yeah definitely. Even though, even though I obviously wish I kind of like it was it was really nice in a, in a third year, maybe, you know, it would, been, it would have been nice to kind of carry on using the workshop in certain ways and stuff. But yeah, it was, it was, you go through stages of how you design and stuff. Which is, yeah, definitely. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah. What was your most memorable man, uh, memory of your undergraduate journey? Um, so my, does that stop sharing now? Yeah. Okay, cool. So my, uh, there you go, so I'll come back here. Um, I guess my most memorable memory was, I, it, it was like, I don't know if it was like, it was a memory, but it was more the crits we used to have in that third year. Because um, we'd all come in with these sort of 
I ideas of what we wanted to talk about and what our project was based on. And especially at the beginning, we were getting like very like Robin was very much encouraging us to look at just really like look at the world and understand what we want to what we'd like to change or what we'd like to see happen. And so we'd spend hours, we'd spend the whole day just all just talking about these different ideas of what could happen, like what we wanted to see change. And I think I, it was really, it was, it was quite special because I think that then formed my way of thinking, which is like influenced how, like how I, de- how I design now, like obviously starting adapt and everything like that is because you understand initially you want to see a change. And then that's, yeah, it, it was just, I think that whole, those crits were just like, they were really special days. Um, and like the people we were with in our group was, yeah, it was like, I just don't, yeah, it was, it was, that was, yeah, it was just really good. And I think whenever I talk to people about the course, I just say, that was what was so great about it is because we were learning to design without actually, without actually designing. But just talking it through. Yeah, exactly. And then, you know, you can, you learn this, you learn the skills later or you learn how to do things later when it comes to, and you're actually making your project, but just kind of getting that base of thinking in a more interesting way was, was really helpful. Um, but yeah, I guess like the same for you. So obviously during your sort of thing, I've been doing this, your whole course, what was the, what's been the most memorable part? Um, so I'll just share a picture. Um, so I think for me, um, the most memorable part of my undergraduate journey was definitely testing with um, the nursery children in that sh- in my final year project. Um, because uh, so obviously my practice usually centers around the idea of play and designing for young people, but in previous projects, I hadn't really ever tested what I had designed, um, not on the kind of scale that we did in this setting. So we had like, I think it was like 10 nursery children come in and play with the play with the play space that I had designed. Um, so I think it was, I think it was really interesting to see what they were doing with it rather than what I had prepared for them to do with it. Um, so usually within interior and spatial design designers usually tend to impose their designs on the children and instead of allowing them to inform the design decisions so I feel like testing was definitely really important um and and it just informed me to make like alterations to the design um and I wouldn't have been able to come to the the realizations that I'd really like pushed my project's design forward without watching them play and it was just there was just something really beautiful about them kind of just wrecking everything but in a great like in a good way you know was there any sort of bits during that that you like really remember them doing something that you kind of like you knew that you kind of had an idea of what they were going to do with one of the bits and then they completely did something else which kind of surprised you yeah so um I actually created like these sandboxes I don't know if you can see in the in the pictures I created like these sandboxes to hold the pipes up so they were supposed to just be like weights to keep the pipes up and instead they just broke into them and started like um drawing with them on the floor and it was just really fascinating to see that they used something that i hadn't necessarily implemented into design um and it was, it was just really an amazing to see but that actually then made me include sand as a material for the final concept so that was really good yeah, that's actually really that's really nice the fact that it was like kind of there like you said, just to kind of like support the structure. And <laughs> the open. Yeah, it's really funny. Well, so how old were the how old were the children then you were working with? Um, so I think they were um they were two two to five year olds. Um, I'm not actually sure what the age group of these. I think they maybe maybe like three. So they were in like they just started nursery. But yeah, I kind of hadn't prepared for them to be so young. So I kind of assumed that they would start like building and connecting the pipes and things like that. But I don't think that their like motor skills are kind of at that level yet. So um, it was really interesting to see what the, they were capable of doing. Um, so like they were actually just using the pipes to um, draw with the sand and like leaning them against chairs and throwing the ping pong balls down them. And it's just, yeah, it was just completely not what I expected, but it was really lovely to watch them. So. Yeah. Do you think it's something you'll carry on? Do you, do, do you enjoy designing for children in that way? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I really do enjoy um, designing for children uh, and community, and I just like the idea. I'm, I'm a, I feel like I'm a very playful designer, so it's nice to see 
um, when the design is kind of compromised by play. So, <laughs> so yeah, I, I do think that that would be something that I kind of look at, look, well, even if it's not specifically play as I, I, I will definitely take like being playful into, into the, fu into future projects that I do. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And then obviously, I guess, cause you've, you've done, obviously this, the, I mean, the end of the year must've been quite weird for this, uh, I mean, to finish your course like this, but what has surprised you about, um, I guess like preparing your online, online showcase and stuff, what, how, how has it sort of been different or what's surprised you? How's it been? Um, so for me, it's been really surprising how, even though everything is very digital right now, we've kind of formed more of a community, I would say, like, um, so, um, it's obviously taken on a digital model, but everyone has come together to kind of like create this publication so that we can all have memories of our final year together. And I just think that that's really like something lovely about that. Like, even though we're all in like separate places and we're like doing separate things, um, they we will still want to create this like one thing that we can all remember together. So I think that that was really interesting. Um, I was obviously definitely looking forward to a physical showcase, um, but I think we're, we're still gonna be able to curate something that we're proud of. Um, and there's definitely benefits to it being online. Um, so it can be seen by a lot more people and obviously for a longer amount of time because it's gonna be up for a year. Um, and I'm also hoping that this year has kind of shown how resourceful online showcasing can be. So maybe it will be something that they take into next year's graduates as well. So doing an online showcase alongside a physical one, yeah. Yeah, and I guess like as well, like a lot more spaces and different, whether it's institutions or companies or anyone's going to have to kind of be doing a lot more showing work in this way, or even have, maybe they will be, when we're allowed to kind of, say if you're preparing for an online, uh, for your sh end of your show, and then it, uh, you had like, we had like a second wave or something like that, you're always kind of probably preparing both. So there'd be like the online show. Yeah. Definitely. And the, the two will probably now go hand in hand, I imagine. Yeah. I feel like it's helped a lot of people um, figure out that there is there's advantages to the digital world that we've kind of been overlooking for a while. And it, I think it's been really nice to spend my days on Zoom. Like I feel like I connect with more people than I did in like my physical life. So, yeah. Yeah, I think that yeah, I think that actually makes that makes sense. I think you you also yeah you're in a you're in a space where you're just having the conversation. You know, you're all kind of there in your presence. So you can kind yeah. of figure things out. Uh, what do you remember about your end of year show? Um, so, so the show team, the show team we had on end of year show were really great. They built, they the way they kind of got everyone's work in, like built a really nice structure to house everyone's work was like was really great. And I like did a small, I, I did bits for them, but what? Wow, well, um, I remember again, like but let's do this. So there, there was the. They actually made more friends, I think, during, I met more people on the course during that end of year show than I had in the, probably the whole third and second year, and probably first, because you kind of had your group or your people you'd always talk to and stuff, but when it came to the end of your show, suddenly everyone's kind of there working together. Yeah. And I think, you know, we, some of the connections you're making, you're always looking to help each other. If you're late, if you're working kind of late in the space, helping set up, you got to get to, get to meet different people. Um, and I guess like also for BA, it was the first time, I don't know, you're kind of like, everyone's kind of coming into this, into this one space. And it was the first time, I guess, you kind of really been aware, for me anyways, it's like really been aware of what is, what, what your role is in that and how like best you can help, um, but also kind of still make sure like you're pushing your own project. And I think that was really nice. I'm trying to think of like an actual memory, but I think it was just, it's more like they're coming together of everyone working hard on something and they like, see how great the team was and and then like the success afterwards and stuff and yeah i think and the celebrating <laughs> yeah exactly and the celebrating it was just more the yeah it was more the experience you know and yeah it's nice it's crazy how you can go like sort of three three years in a course and you know quite you feel you know quite a lot of people and then suddenly you know you, you just get to know a lot more people uh, yeah at the end of your show which is always great um and yeah, so I guess like if you sort of like now this if the show's gonna be up for a year and then now obviously like 
coming to an end so you know you kind of have you got any have you started thinking about the next couple of months ahead or have you started thinking about what the next steps are <laughs> very, very difficult question and everyone will keep asking you this all the time yeah <laughs> uh, it's definitely been a question I've been asked um but yeah so since graduating I've just been working on just this bright like various smaller projects so I just finished writing a blog post for um the graduate showcase for Chelsea um and then and then I also submitted to Interior Educators um, Best Life Project with my peer Anna on our collaborative project um, with the South London Gallery. Um, and then I also have the completion of this project to look forward to um, in the coming months because it was originally set to be um, done in May, but obviously with the pandemic, it's been postponed until October. But I think that that's quite nice that I still have something to look forward to and I can still um, speak to Anna and, you know, we have something to work on until then. Um, and then I've also I've also been like pushing my further interests that I have in like um, I've been I'm interested in like sustainable fashion and upcycling. So I've just been like running my own business at the moment um, in upcycling fashion and selling that on. Um, so, yeah, um, I'm, I'm kind of just using what I've learned over the three years and putting that into personal other, other personal interests and seeing kind of how I can integrate my interests of interior and spatial design and fashion and kind of like merge them together. Um, I'm not really sure of the particular path I'm going to be taking to achieve that, but I'm excited to see what happens. Yeah, well, I think that's really cool, though, because I think like what you know, your whole project has been about that. And if you're doing your work with clothing and fashion in, in fashion now, I think that's like it's, it's just as important. And you, there's always find ways to link the two together. Because uh, yeah, Josie and I are also starting to move now into uh, into sort of so how how clothing can be a like a form of protest and different things and like. I think the, the, all of them all connect and it's kind of nice that you're like you said that your project's carrying on uh, up until later on in the year because it gives you something to always kind of be working on or talking to people about and then you, know, you can kind of build up on that but yeah I think we can definitely like it's going to be exciting to like actually see it and see the children play with it as well yeah I think that'd be really cool yeah, yeah. so so if it's, it's in October should it, uh, should it give me a drop me an email when it's um when it's up and stuff because we'll do we'll come down and see if, if that's going to help at all okay yeah brilliant yeah I'll let you know about it um so what's on what's on your horizon what what about adapt and what yeah are you doing? uh so I'll, sh I'll share my screen so I'm going to we've got a couple of things in the pipeline which I can't we're not actually allowed to me and Joyce can't actually talk about them but we can talk around them if that makes sense yeah I uh, so you can you see that as well? yeah so obviously, the next year, what I got, so that was fine. That, that, uh, this was earlier, this is my master's project, which again was kind of exactly the same, but also very, you'll see the, you'll see the relationship between um, how this is all very black and white and dark, like my BA project. Yeah. We're going to adapt and I kind of like completely changed the way I work because it was- um, Very colorful. Yeah, there was a lot of what Joe's did and she always used humor in her work. So we're trying to like, you know, trying to make things as accessible for people as possible. Um, yeah trying to engage them in climate issues in like lots of different ways so when so I guess like so off what we did so building what we do okay, so I try and use the yeah the other projects we've done to explain what we're doing now so we always try and work with different artists who are um kind of like looking to be engaged in climate in climate change and the climate conversation but haven't really got the platform mm. so kind of always work with them to do that by whether it's setting them a brief or which normally involves us coming up with the language and they kind of use it in different ways um for example like we did with our sadness exhibition we had like 50 artists together to um to respond to the climate crisis with loads of actions um but what we're doing now is like another project where we use coming together with lots of different artists and we're getting them to create a piece of i guess like it's, a, it's wearable protest design so there will coming together to do that and then we're gonna then we're gonna partner be partnering with another company to um to kind of make like this one-off piece to kind of base to kind of support the artist's work so it's kind of like learning what we did before but in like you were just saying so we've gone from like uh, an exhibition space to now we're going very much into I guess the fashion side of things yeah, is, yeah. You know, we just kind of like do whatever we we kind of want to play around with making a wearable exhibition it's really interesting yeah exactly and something that can be 
you know, because the ex exhibition only happens in the space at this one time. And I guess that's why it's so good about the digital, what, uh, having your showcase online is the fact that it's, it's always accessible for people. Yeah. You know, so we're kind of like, okay, how can we get things outside? How can we bring protests sort of outside of the home? So again, yeah. like more of the campaigns we do, which is obviously a lot of the stuff as we do as online, is like how can we get into physical spaces? So this is a project we did with Ocean Bottle to get people to think about the ocean during lockdown. But so our next thing is now like, how can we get people to think about the relationship between Black Lives Matter, climate change and coronavirus. And we're kind of trying to find ways to kind of bring this out uh, outside of the home. That should be kind of like, and we're going to do more uh, more takeovers as well. We've got another one planned for newspapers. Just when we took over the Metro, so we like, we um, hijacked like the metros around London and replaced the cover just before the general election. <laughs> So we're going to kind of be doing more stuff like that, which is a bit more. Um, we've got some stuff planned, but we can't. Always, we we can't talk about it because um, we, for various reasons. Yeah, yeah, it's all very exciting though. Yeah, so that's kind of yeah, that's kind of what we got planned, and so yeah, I'll keep you. I'll yeah, keep, keep me informed. Keep me in hear about. Yeah, I think that's. Is there, is there anything else you wanted to cover, or you kind of? Is that? It was really. It was a really nice chat. It's actually. It was nice having sent you being sent your projects and like kind of like understanding them and hearing you talk about it and stuff. And see how yeah, it. I feel the same. Yeah, it was really nice to look at your work and like look at the website and then actually understand what it's about from hearing you speak. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> but yeah um, I. I. Yeah. I think we've covered pretty much everything. Um, but yeah, it just yeah, it definitely inform me when you're when everything comes to fruition because I be interested in seeing what what's actually what's actually going to happen yeah definitely now you know look at the showcase and then obviously yeah well especially as soon as your like your space is set up and it's live that'd be it'd be really nice to go and see how people are interacting with that yeah cool. all right yeah thanks thank Chloe. you so much Vers. that was really good yeah great <laughs> good i'm gonna turn the recording off now but that was really good great <laughs>